Hi girls, I hope you're having a great day so far. I'm hopping on today to show you a recipe that I was thinking about all morning long and it's sort of, um, it well, not sort of, it is like part of plow, only I'm gonna make it a little bit different. Normally, if I make part of plow, I will uh, kind of make it like biryani and then I'll wrap it and then I'll bake it in the oven like that. But today I'm gonna do it just a little tiny bit different. And I'm gonna use some gurgur and eggplant, onion, garlic. We are gonna kind of do it up like that and some biryani spices. And then we're gonna wrap it and we'll put it in the oven. But I just wanted to hop on and show you what how I'm gonna do it today. I'm switching it up from the way I normally do it because I wanted to use some eggplant I have in the fridge. We are leaving for California tomorrow, which I can't wait for because one, I get to see one of my best friends, and two, there's sunshine there, okay? And mama needs a little sunshine in her life. Okay, uh, you notice I'm back to my high and tight uh, hair, okay? I really appreciate all the interaction about my hair. It's kind of funny to me, but anyways, here we go. This is what I'm gonna do first. I'm going to start with some gurgur, okay? And I got the kind that has the noodles mixed in there. I have four cups in here, and you know what? I always give it a good rinse, rinse it really good, kind of let it set, let it get dry, um, just to kind of, you know, be on the safe side. I chopped up, um, two, I had two small, like, white onions. They were, like, really kind of small. So I chopped them up. I did one in thin slices, and then the other one I chopped up really small and it's gonna go in the pot that I make the gurgur in. Now, for my gurgur, my brother-in-law, Rawad, which it's his birthday today, happy birthday, Rawadi, I love you. Um, I can't believe, I think he's 36 today and I met him when he was 18. Oh my God, time is flying. But anyhow, for my gurgur, he loves my gurgur when I make it. I don't use water, okay? And I use chicken stock when I make it and water and it makes the flavor like amazing. If you're gonna do something with beef and gurgur, use beef stock instead of chicken stock. But today I'm gonna to use chicken stock, okay? So first thing I do is I use my trusty pot. You know how much I love this pot, okay? I'm gonna move this out of the way just for now so you can see. And I'm gonna put a good amount of oil in the bottom of this pan, probably about um, a quarter of a cup a quarter of a cup of oil to about a third of a cup of oil. And I'm gonna turn it on like a medium to high flame, okay? And I'm gonna let that get a little bit hot. And then what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna add that onion and I chopped up. Now garlic is, is like the most important thing with gurgur. Otherwise you're gonna have like the most boring, plain tasting, gurgur ever, right? You need garlic in there, honey. You need garlic. Put some garlic in it. So I chopped up about six cloves of garlic, all right? You know how I am about garlic and butter, like those two things, okay? So I chopped up some garlic, I chopped up that onion, and I'm going to just slide it right into the pot, okay, with that oil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it set there for a little bit, okay? And I'm gonna let that kind of get start to get brown like a little bit, I want the onion to kind of start to caramelize in the bottom of the, pan, of the pan before I put the gurgur in the pan with it, okay? So it's kind of going right now. I can hear it sizzling behind me. And then let me tell you while that's doing its thing, what else we're gonna do. I had one of those huge rotisserie chickens, like this thing was enormous. And I actually made a huge pot of chicken noodle soup this morning my sister wasn't feeling well so I made homemade chicken noodle and sent that to her and I had a whole the huge breast left so I just pulled it off the bone I chopped it really small that's gonna go in with our gurgur okay so think of it like we're gonna make like a biryani style gurgur but we're gonna use eggplant chicken peas onions and then we're gonna do a little surprise and put it in a package with a ribbon on it right so that's going so I have that chicken chopped up. I have one can of sweet peas, drained, okay? I think I drained them already, yep, drained. A whole onion, whole white onion. I have some um, biryani spice right here. Of course, salt, pepper we're gonna use. I told you about the garlic, we're gonna use some garlic. And of course, my eggplant, 
now I debated. I was gonna do the eggplant in the air fryer. And to me, personally, it just doesn't have the same like taste to me when I do it in the air fryer, the eggplant. I'm an eggplant freak. I love Ben John. I love it. I love it. I can eat it all day. But I'm gonna do it in a pan with oil because I think once I mix everything together, it's just gonna give it a little extra flavor that I want. So what I did was I chopped it up. I generously salted it because that's gonna draw out all that bitterness. And you're gonna see, you're gonna see there's liquid on top. You wanna pat that dry before you throw it into the oil. Sometimes I feel t uh, like silly telling you guys this because you guys are all like experienced people when it comes to like making these dishes. So I probably don't need to tell you that, but just in case you don't know. Okay, so that's starting to really smell fragrant. I don't want to burn the garlic, right? So as soon as I start to see that that onion's turning a color, I'm going to throw the gurgur in the pot with all of that, okay? And then I'll set up my pan and I'll fry up my eggplant just like you would everything else with biryani. You know how you normally do the potatoes? and Now the potatoes I'll do in the air fryer that's, and the meatballs. Amazing, but we're not doing that today. So for the eggplant, I'm just going to fry it in the pan and I'm going to do my onion and everything and we'll mix it all together and then we're going to build our dish, okay? That smells great. Okay, so now I'm going to add all the gurgur. If I can get it out of the pan, I, I um, washed it. I better use my a different spoon because that spoon does not cut. I don't want to get it all over the place. There we go. It's just because I washed it that it's hard to get out of there. It soaked up that water. There we go. I just like to rinse it, you know, just like I do my rice. Now I just threw it in there. I'm just gonna stir it all together. Give it a few minutes to kind of soak in the oil and the onion and the garlic. We're gonna add some salt to this. So normally, if I was only making just gurgur for like to go with chicken and salad or something, I would just add some salt to this, my chicken stock, cover it and cook it and leave it. But because I'm doing something different today and we're gonna do it like a biryani, we're gonna have to add our biryani spices to this burger, okay? So let me give this a stir. Just the right amount of oil in there too. You wanna make sure that there's a little sheen, like you can see a little shininess to your burger. You want a little bit of oil in with it, okay? I'm gonna open my chicken stock, get that ready. Open my biryani spice. And just do the same amount that you would when you make regular biryani. Yep, smells amazing. Coco is like right underneath me, of course. She can't leave my side for one second. I'm gonna do a good heaping tablespoon of, and a little pinch more, of biryani spice. Let's put that on the side. You might need that again. I'm gonna give it a good stir. Here we go. You have to add, have to, have to add some salt. Now, you know I don't measure so I probably put like a teaspoon and a half because I like it a little more salty. You might not. Now I'm also adding about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. That's, this is exactly how I would be making biryani if I was making it with rice. And I would add the yellow coloring, but I'm not gonna do that here. You guys, the smell is just amazing. All right, now, now that I've got my spices mixed in there and everything, now I'm gonna add this chicken stock, okay? This is about four cups of liquid right here. But I also have four cups of gurgur in there. So what I'm gonna do is once I add this, I'm also gonna throw in two cups of water. Oh yeah. Oh my God, you guys. Oh, I wish I could explain the smell in my kitchen right now. Okay, so that's four cups right there. And I changed my mind, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna only add one cup, one cup more of liquid. One more cup of water. There we go. 
Now, this Gerger, it's going to cook pretty fast, right? Gerger doesn't take a very long time. It's going to soak up all that water really, really quickly. I'm going to set my spoon over there. I'm going to cover it, and I'm going to put it on medium low and just leave it, okay? So I'm going to pause. I'm going to let that cook up. As soon as I see, just like my Rizza when I do Rizza, as soon as I see that all the water has evaporated in there, I just turn it off. I leave it covered while I do my other stuff, and then I'll come back to it, and I swear you'll have the most perfect Gerger or Rizza every single time. It'll be nice and light and fluffy, okay? So I'm gonna go let that cook. I'm gonna get the rest of this stuff ready, and we're gonna keep going, okay? So I'll be right back. Okay, so the Gerger finally cooked, and I all the water's evaporated out of there, so I just turned off the heat, and I just leave, I'm just gonna leave it covered while I finish up everything. You can see I'm frying the eggplant right here. And I took my phyllo dough out of the freezer. Now, if you can find the long sheets of phyllo, that's even better, okay? The market I went to didn't have the long sheets, so I was stuck getting the short ones. It's fine, it'll work. But um, make sure that you take your phyllo out and allow it to defrost. If you try to use it while it's a little bit frozen, it's gonna crack, and you don't want it to crack, okay? If you open it, Make sure you keep a wet towel on it so that it stays moist, okay? Otherwise, it's gonna crack and you don't want it to crack, okay? So make sure you take that out in enough time because we're gonna layer it in a pot and put everything inside of it, okay? So I had a little green pepper and I debated it. I'm like, green pepper, no green pepper. Eh. Sometimes green pepper can be a little bit bitter and did you know that if you look at the bottom of a green pepper, if there's like three little pumps on the green pepper versus four on the green pepper, it means something different. One is like sweeter and better for cooking and one is better for like something else. I, I can't remember exactly. I'll have to find that and mention it in the comments somewhere, but there's like a difference, okay? Anyhow, um, I did cut up a very small green pepper and I'm gonna saute it with the onion and I'm gonna throw it in there just because I have it, why not? I'm pretty happy with the way the eggplant looks right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, just put it in a bowl lined with paper towel to kind of drain the grease off, off of it. Just like that. I'm a lefty, so everything's like backwards, right? There we go. There. All right, yeah, I, I can eat this eggplant right now just like this and my life would be complete. I actually should have cooked two eggplants and I would have been happier. Now I always save, um, when my oil things get empty, I save them and I just put the grease in there so that I can throw them in the garbage. I try not to put the, the grease down the sink. Okay, there we go. Because I don't need all this grease now. I have a fryer in the garage, but I, I'm just being lazy. I'm being like super lazy, right? Okay. Here we go, get all that out of there. And so then this oil is screaming hot. Be very, very, very careful. Okay. The oil is really, really hot. Now, if you have like a larger um, uh, like pot, you can put it in until it cools off. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna dump off the oil into in the sink into a pan, let it cool off, and just keep the amount of oil that I need to fry the onion and the, the green pepper. Because I don't want to pour that down the drain. And then I'll transfer it from this pot to an empty um, oil thing. Okay, so I just left enough oil, okay, in the bottom of that pan to throw in the um, to saute the onions and the green pepper and that chicken. I hope I'm not confusing you guys what I'm doing. See, and it's good that I save that. If I need a little bit more oil, I can add it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw in, remember I sliced up thinly that one onion. I'm gonna throw that in there. This burger smells like amazing. Between that and the eggplant, my brain is like on overload. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in that green pepper. I might regret the green pepper, but We'll see. Hey, we're experimenting here anyway, so why not, right? I'm gonna go ahead, give that a stir. 
I'm gonna lightly salt it with some kosher salt. If you're using kosher salt, be very careful, okay? Because it's like a little bit goes a long way. So I just pour it in my hand first, just like a little tiny bit and I can control the salt amount. We're gonna also go back in, just like I do when I make biryani, I add some of the biryani spice to the onion mixture. Let me get a dry spoon, I don't wanna stick that in there. Um, probably about a tablespoon of the biryani spice. That's sufficient. Okay. There we go. Oh, it smells great. Green pepper and onion together, they smell really good. I'm not going to smell so good. It's all going to be stuck in my clothing, and then I have to drive the girls to gymnastics, and I'm going to smell like food, right? Oh, let's preheat our oven. You need to preheat your oven to 400 degrees. 400, and I have a bunch of crap in my oven, like all my pans, right? So let me take those out. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees because we're gonna finish this in the oven. Now normally I would put the raisins in there, right? I'm not gonna do that because Robbie does not like kishmish. I like kishmish. I like it in everything. I like it. I like the flavor. I like the sweetness with the savory. He doesn't really like it. So what I normally do when I make the part of plow is I put it on the top with some almonds and that way he can kind of move it to the side if he wants. Whatever. Just being nice. Okay. Now I'm going to add my peas. One. You can use frozen. You can use canned. Whatever. Veggies. Now, here is, this is about two cups of chopped rotisserie chicken. Make your life easy. Use rotisserie chicken whenever you can. It makes life like so easy. You can make burritos, you can make biryani, you can make this. You can, I mean, why waste your time cooking a chicken when you can buy one, right? Okay, dump that in there. I just chop it up good. There we go. Let it, you know, kind of give it a good stir so that that very heavy spice kind of gets all over the chicken and all the veggies in there. You're just going to cook it until that onion is getting soft. And it doesn't, it won't take long. Let me check on this, okay? Oh yeah, okay, I'm gonna give it a stir. They could use just another like few minutes over here to soak up just a little bit more moisture, but it looks really good. Let me check the flavor. I'm gonna show you. Leave it covered, let that go. Okay, so here is the gurgur so far, right? It's really hot. I just want to check, check the, uh, you should always taste it and, you know, taste your food to see if you need to add more of something. Go light on the spices at first. You can always add more later, but if you go too heavy handed, you kind of ruin the whole dish. It's got a terrific flavor. It really does. So I can't wait to mix it with everything else and put it in there. Now I have to say, I think that the biryani spice that I have, it's got a little heat to it. Normally I don't taste that kind of heat and it's not the hot one. So maybe it's hot and they forgot to label it. But either way, very good flavor to that. Let's put that away. Give this another mix. So let me finish this. All I'm gonna do now, okay, is I'm gonna finish cooking off the chicken and the onions and the peas. I'm gonna add it to the gurgur. I'm gonna throw the eggplant in with the gurgur. I'm gonna give it all a good mix so it's all incorporated. And then you need to make sure that you have a pot, okay? This is a Dutch oven. This can go inside the oven or on the stove top, either way. This is another pot that I think I will cry if anything ever happens to it, but I mean, it's 
I don't think anything will ever happen to it. I think you could kill somebody with this thing. But you need something like this because we're gonna build our dish in here, okay? You need to grab your olive oil, your phyllo dough. You need to grab yourself a little pastry brush so you can brush the olive oil. And then we'll come back and we'll build this together. We'll throw in the oven for about 20 minutes until it's golden and just wait until you see it at the end, okay? So I'm gonna go finish this. All I'm gonna do, so you're not missing anything, is just mix it all together and put it in the pot and then I'm gonna come back and build the phyllo and, and we'll go from there. All right, now everything is done and mixed together. You guys, I gave it a little taste. It's amazing, okay? It looks really, really good. It has really good flavor. So we're gonna set this on the side for now and we are gonna start with layering our pastry in here, okay? So the most important thing is you gotta make sure that you oil the pot really well. Now you can use melted butter, you can use ghee, you can use olive oil, you can use vegetable oil. I use olive oil and I'm just gonna put about maybe, I don't know, about two tablespoons in the bottom and I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna make sure that I brush the pot really, really well on the bottom because you don't want this to stick because you're gonna have to flip it out of the pan once it's done cooking, okay? So I brush this up and you can even give it a good spray with some cooking spray too. I think I'll do that too on the sides just to make sure that that pastry doesn't stick. I unfolded my phyllo. I think the bottom is really good, but let's just, for the heck of it, Brush your sides really good, okay? Make sure you're brushing that oil up the side of the pan. Really good. You know another way to do this is put a glove on your hand and do it, or a plastic baggie and do it if you don't have a brush. Just for the hell of it. You don't need to do this, but I'm gonna, just for the heck of it, I'm gonna give her a good spray because I don't want that phyllo, once it comes out of my 400 degree oven, I don't want it to stick. Now I really like the long, long sheets of the phyllo because they make, they come up the sides really nice. You, I'm gonna grab about, I don't know, like two layers of phyllo, okay? Two pieces. And I'm gonna put it in the bottom of the pan and you're gonna end up crisscrossing, okay? So you see how it's hanging over the edge of the pan and you want it to get up against, okay, let me show you. Okay, because it's hard to see what I'm doing, okay? Just like that. And I'm gonna grab a couple more. Just make sure I don't overdo it. And we're gonna go on the other side. Like that. We're gonna let that phyllo hang over. And another layer here. So that you have a nice coat of it in the bottom of your pan. Part of plow is so good and it's that crispy layer of the phyllo that makes it so amazing. So you want to make sure that you have like at least three sheets in the bottom of the pan like kind of layered so that it is nice and sturdy to hold what we're doing. I'm going to pour a little olive oil and I'm going to use my brush. I'm going to brush those layers down there with the olive oil. Kind of go up the sides. You want to make sure that you're covering it. And I'm just going to repeat this process a few times until I get all of it layered how I want, okay? Make sure that's nice and a little bit. I just do a little bit at a time and you gotta be careful because your phyllo might rip a little bit and that's okay. It's okay if it rips, it's gonna be fine, I promise. Just try to get it up the sides, just like that, okay? And now watch, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna dump it in there. And we're gonna, we're gonna add more phyllo, don't worry. And this is really super hot still, so that's okay. Dump it all in there. Oh my God, you guys, it has great flavor. You probably can't see what I'm doing here. I wish I had a camera like that was above me so you could see kind of what I'm doing. Your phyllo doesn't have to be perfect. If it's not perfect, don't panic. I remember the first time I made this, I was so scared. I'm like, it's not going to be perfect, you know, the phyllo, but that's okay. Now I dumped everything in there and I'm just kind of 
flattening it out with the bottom of my spoon, just like that. And you know what, if you're, don't be afraid. I mean, if you try it and you fail, so what? You just try again, right? Just keep trying. Now look it, I'm gonna take that phyllo and I'm gonna fold it back in on the top. You can see it's cracking, that's because it's getting dry. I, I left it without a towel on it. Now, I'm gonna do another little layer here. This is a better idea, like this. Let me pour some olive oil in the cup, dip my brush in, and I'm gonna go over these layers. It's kind of like when you make spinach pie, which is also one of my favorites. I make an amazing spinach pie. Maybe we'll do that one day. I'm just gonna brush them really quick just so there's a layer of oil on it. That's gonna help brown it up, get it nice and crispy. Fold that in. All right, make sure you get it spread out. My neighbor stopped by and visited and I left the phyllo on the counter while I was talking to her, so it kinda got a little cracked, but that's okay. I'm gonna take another sheet and I'm just gonna layer it right on the top. You can cut it if you want to make it nice. I'm not going to do that. I think I'm just going to layer it right back in there because that's going to be my bottom layer, so I don't really care. Like that. If your OCD is kicking in and you want it to be perfect, then maybe. All right, here we go. Layer it again. Hi, babes. Hello. Okay, Sophie's just finishing up school. Tell everybody where we're going tomorrow. California. California. Are you excited? Yes. She gets to see her best friend. So, okay, now I did put about three extra sheets on there. And I'm going to take the olive oil again. And I'm going to brush that. Try to be gentle because you're going to move that all around there. Just brush it with your olive oil or your ghee or your butter or whatever. It's just a preference. I like the olive oil. I like how it turns out with the olive oil. My oven's already preheated to the 400. Straighten that out a little bit. I messed that one up, there we go. And this is my bottom layer, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And you're gonna top it with the slivered almonds and the kishmish. It's gonna be beautiful no matter what. But you just want enough olive oil to get it golden brown, okay? And you want that bottom layer to have enough where it gets golden brown. Okay. See, I didn't even use an entire thing of phyllo, so I'm just going to wrap it back up. Maybe I should do one more layer. What do you think, Sophie? One more? Yes. Extra crispy is always good, right? Mm -hmm. Let's do one more. Because we do like our phyllo, right? There we go. One more layer won't hurt us, right? Great. Okay. Maybe one more. I love crispy, crispy crust on anything. And now let's do our other one. You have to be gentle with the phyllo. It just will shred on you. I'm gonna press it down kind of firm with my hand. And we'll do a little bit more olive oil on this layer. Brush it gentle. Sophie, you love this dish. Remember, do you remember mommy making this? Remember when it comes out and it looks like a big pie? And it's crispy oh, and brown. Like the, um, part of plow. Yeah, is it like the biryani? Yeah, it's like the biryani that I make inside this dough. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's good. Now, let me just do this really quick. I'm gonna roll it up so that I can throw it back in the fridge, freezer, whatever. Maybe I'll use it. Now, I'm gonna throw this in the oven uncovered, okay? And it's gonna take about 20 minutes for it to get done. So it's going into a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes or until you start to see it really nice and golden and then you can pull it out, okay? So I'll come back, it'll be done in 20 minutes and we'll see what it looks like. Be right back. Okay girls, I just took it out of the oven. I probably left it in a little bit closer to 25 minutes and it's beautiful. It's nice and golden, gorgeous. And I actually, um, took a butter knife and I just gently, gently, gently went around the edges. You don't want to go too hard in there because if you rip the phyllo, it's going to mess up the sides. I probably could have made those layers a little bit thicker on the inside, but whatever, it's fine. Um, I let it set for a few minutes. I have a platter ready to tip it over on 
And then all I did was I browned some golden raisins with some slivered almonds, chopped up some fresh parsley, just sauteed them a little bit of oil and um, to pour on the top, okay? Just to kind of make it look pretty. I love the flavor of the kishmish, but Robbie's kind of like, you know, he doesn't really like it too much. I'm gonna have a hard time flipping this because this pan is one hot and two, it's super heavy. So I'll do my best. And I'm afraid, I don't wanna, this glass platter is a little bit cold. I don't wanna break it. I love this, this dish, but let's see what we can do here. Yeah, I'm kinda scared. Maybe I should use my metal one, huh? Yeah, probably. Yeah, well, well, I guess we'll find out. That would really, really suck if I, uh, broke this. All right. See, it's super heavy. Super duper heavy. Okay. Put the plate like that. Oh, it's so heavy, guys. All right, ready? Sorry, guys. I know it's loud. And I think I destroyed it because it's so heavy. I need Robbie to be the one to do this for me, but I heard it crunch, so I probably messed it up a little bit. But that's okay. Worst things could happen. Let's see if I can move it a little. It might be a little cracked, but that's okay. So let's put the ugly side out, right? All right, wow, it's so damn hot. That's the problem. Oh, wow. It's still pretty. I got a little bit of damage to the side. That's okay. It smells amazing. Now, you can see I made a mistake in the fact that one, I should have let it cool a little bit longer. Two, I need to make this phyllo in the pan a little bit thicker. So a couple extra layers would have been great, okay? But that's all right, no big deal. It's still pretty. It's better when it's all solid. I broke the side over here, not a big deal, okay? It's really crispy on the top. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. Now all I'm gonna do I wish it was a little more solid right there. I'd have been happier. I needed extra layers of phyllo. I could have went a little bit thicker. So when you make yours, learn from my error, okay? And make it a little bit thicker there. And that is so damn hot, that pan. I don't know how I was able to even turn it. It's super hot. All right, but this is what it looks like. I wish it was a little prettier but it's piping hot. It smells incredible. And I really want to send a picture to Robbie before I bite into it, but there's a little space right here on the edge I can probably take a bite of. Let's see. Okay. All right, here we go. So learn from my mistakes here and make your phyllo a little bit thicker, okay? And I think you'll like it better. Here we go. Very, very good, a lot of flavor. I like the little crunch, delicious, you guys. I apologize in advance because I'm not gonna sit and write down everything I did. If you wanna make it, follow the video, I guess. Pause and go back and watch. I have too much to do to leave tomorrow. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Make your phyllo a little bit thicker. Let it cook just maybe a little bit longer, maybe 25 minutes, 30 minutes. It'll be really, really extra golden on the top. But other than that, the flavor combinations are amazing. I will see you all later. I'll be absent for a little while because I'm going to have some fun. So until then, Owafi, I love you guys and I'll see you later.